So let's introduce our speaker for today, Adam Lewinberg. He is the president of Postal Advocate. We are the only mail audit and recovery firm in the US and Canada. We manage over a, a portfolio of over 61,000 pieces of mail equipment for the largest US companies. Adam speaks and teaches nationally on mail savings and industry trends. He is the industry co-chair for the Boston Postal Customer Council, and he is also a member of the Mail Systems Management Association. He has CMDSS and MDC certifications. He's also a featured writer for the Mailing Systems Technology Magazine. He also worked for one of the largest mail vendors for over 18 years as the director of national sales for pre-sort, tabletop inserters, addressing, hardware, software, and green offerings. He was also one of the top five account managers nationally, working with some of the largest top accounts. Just so that you know, Postal Advocate is not affiliated with any mailing vendors, so we offer unbiased advice. So over to you, Adam. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody. For, thank you, Doris. Thank you for everyone for coming today. We get to talk about the postal rate change, and there are a lot of interesting things about it. Some places it's going to the pricing is going to go up, and some places the pricing is going to go down. And so we'll give you information about so you can see how it's going to impact your budget. So what we're going to cover: what rates are changing, how this impacts you. So we're going to go through some tools that you can use to figure out, you know, how you're going to plan for the to budget for this increase. What you need to do, there's some things you should make sure are in place before uh, Monday morning when the rates change, and some savings tips. We're going to put those savings tips throughout the webinar so you can find ways in almost every category to reduce costs. And again, the rates take effect Sunday, January 22nd. Post office does this the day before you actually can mail things because obviously you can't mail on Sundays. And they do that so you can get ready for it and test any systems to make sure you're ready for usually the Monday morning rush. We're going to focus on the most common rate categories. There's no way to do every single rate category, but we're going to focus on those that we find most businesses and organizations use on a day-to-day -day basis. If you have other classes of mail that you're using, you can find them on USPS Postal Explorer, um, and there's a link that will be included in the webinar so you can find out more details about those rates. So the first thing we're going to talk about is first class single piece mail. This is the most common category that is used throughout businesses. So the so there is three categories of first class mail. There's letters, flats, and parcels. The letter segment we're going to start out with is there's is for lettered stamps. It's not for metered mail or PC postage. It's for stamp mail. And the price of stamp mail, if you go to the post office and buy stamps, is going up from 47 cents to 49 cents. So it's a 4.3 percent increase. What you'll notice is for the for incremental ounces, so for two, three ounce pieces as an example, that second ounce, the price didn't go up. It's still 21 cents. So the reason the percentage increase goes down is as items get heavier, it's just a smaller percentage increase. With flats, the price went from 94 to 98 cents, a 4.3 percent increase as well. And you know it was discussed. So uh, one of the consultants brought up to me that he thinks that that happened. So if you're using stamps and you're doing a flat, you can just use two stamps and it's an exact amount without having to buy special stamps in order to do a flat. Um, and you can see that there's no increase in the additional ounces of those pieces as well. The largest increase is on the parcel rates. They've gone up 9% at the low, the low end. And as items get heavier, that increase goes down and in some cases is a, sl is a small reduction. So you want to think about this increase as a 1.1% decrease to 9% increase. Stamps again, 47 to 49 cents. No price increase in the additional ounce. Flats are increasing and parcels are going up. Now, the big thing that's happening is if you use a postage meter or PC postage, your price is actually going down. So your price was 46 and a half cents last year. Now it's going to 46 cents. So you're getting a 1.1% decrease. Again, no increase for the additional ounce. So the interesting thing is if you compare the metered mail rate at 46 cents to the stamped rate at 49 cents, you save three cents a piece by using a postage meter or PC postage. So when you look at that across different mail volumes, and let's say that you do $10,000 a year in postage, and that's mostly letters, then, then it's 21,739 letters. It's $652 in savings. If you spend $100,000 a year, it's a $6,500 savings. So you can see this is pretty significant. It's the largest savings the, the post office has ever offered business mailers who use some sort of form of automated technology to process their first class letters. They've, you know, when they first came out with this savings, it was always the same rate. A few years ago, they made it a penny less. They reduced that penny to a half a cent, and now they increased it to three cents. So it's a big deal. The other thing is, if you don't have a postage meter or PC postage, 
There are entry-level solutions that started about $20 per month, and they can make it easier to manage the mail. And you can see sort of the volumes that make sense and if it makes sense for your organization. First class mail commercial. So commercial is anything automated. So if you are barcoding your mailings in your office, if you're sorting them and bringing them to the post office, or if maybe you're using a pre-sort service, you qualify for first class automation commercial mail. So the rates on those, on the five digit rates, are actually going down. And five digit means you have 150 pieces going to a five digit zip code that qualifies you for a five digit rate. And the rates on those are going from 37.6 to 37.3. And the other rates, you know, the AADC and the automation AADC rates and pre-sorted rates are going up, but only about 1%. The post office used to have a separate rate category for letters for three-digit automation, which meant 150 pieces going to a three-digit zip code, like 021. But the rate in the last rate case was the same as it was for AADC. And the post office just said, why do we have all these rates? Let's streamline this, make it easier for customers. And they eliminated the automation three-digit rate to make hopefully sorting and bundling um, simpler. Flats, the rates uh, are going up on the, the opposite. They're going up on the five digit, on the deepest sorted pieces, you know, almost 2%, and other rates are staying the same. And postcard rates are going up about 1%. So on the five digit level, if you're a letter mailer in, in your high volume shop, you may want to think about renegotiating with your pre-sort house. Pre-sort house is trying to get as much of your mail to a five-digit five-digit sort level as possible, so they're getting a bigger share of the savings on this new rate case. So it might be a good time for you to negotiate to see if you can share in some of that savings with the pre-sort house. Um, the change, though, is this thing where the post office a couple years ago came out with this rule that said two ounces, second ounce rides free, and what that meant is. When you look at the rates up here for metered letters, you can see that one ounce is 46, is 46 cents, two ounces is 67. A couple of years ago, the post office came out with something called second ounce rides free. And what it meant was you could mail up to two ounces. If you were using commercial first class mail, you could do up to two ounces for the same price as the one ounce pieces. And the whole post office's goal was to get you adding extra content to your pieces and making that mail more valuable and hopefully keeping you from outsourcing that or switching electronic. So what the post office changed is they went from two ounces to 3.5 ounces of mail, um, counting at the one ounce rate. So look at the, let's say you're doing a three ounce piece, it's 88 cents, um, but you get to do that at the one ounce rate if you use commercial rates. So I'll show you a little bit more about that in a second, but the savings are pretty significant. Also, there's a discount that was in place last year for full service IMB customers. Customers are putting an IMB barcode onto the pieces, save an extra uh, 0.003 cents. That's still in effect, and it's on top of these rates. So let's talk about those first class mail savings options. Let's talk about letters. So let's look at that three ounce letter for a second. If you go to the post office and buy stamps, you're gonna spend 91 cents. If you use a postage meter, it goes down to 88 cents or 3.3 cent savings. But if you convert to commercial automation rates, it's 37.3 to 42.3 cents. It's 52 to 58% less than running it just as a regular metered rate. Significant savings. And you can look at it across all the weight breaks of using automation mail. It's anywhere between eight to 66% savings, mainly the majority of it due to some of these extra weight savings from the second, third, and third and a half ounce rides free. So if you're doing flats and you're doing 9 by 12 or 10 by 13 flats and they're not that thick and they don't have that much paper in them, consider folding them into 6 by 9 uh, envelopes. So the main thing the post office is trying to get here is they're trying to get you adding, whether it's adding newsletters or advertising content um, into your pieces so you can improve the value of the mail and save money at the same time. If you're an invoice or statement mailer and you do a lot of variable page invoices or statements and some pieces are one ounce, two ounces, and three ounces, the nice thing is they all go at the same rate now. You don't have to worry about you know, the, the two ounce or the three ounce pieces go at different rates as long as you're using a commercial sorted automated class. And pre-sort houses are clearly the easiest way to do that. So a little bit more on folding flats into letters, converting lightweight flats to letters. Let's say you have a flat envelope and you only have six to 10 sheets of paper into that, into that envelope. Well, that's probably costing about $1.40 for you to send out first class mail just flat. If you fold that in half 
and run it through regular metered mail, it's 67 cents. So give or take about a 50% savings. If you run it through a pre-sort service or an automation class, that goes down to anywhere between 37.3 to 45 cents and, you know, for additional savings. So all by all that you need to do with that is fold it in half and put it into a six by nine envelope. And what we find is a lot of times when people get lightweight flats at their door, they're banded around other pieces of mail and they're basically folded when they get there. So it's a simple way to save money if you have those types of mail that are going out of your organization. Marketing mail. So marketing mail was formerly called, last year it was called standard mail, and now it's called marketing mail, which makes sense because standard mail or marketing mail is basically um, mail that's not in personalized and correspondence. So what that means is think about if you're sending an invoice, a statement, a check, a letter to somebody, those are all personalized. Every single piece is different. That has to go first class. But if you're sending out newsletters, flyers, uh, offers, catalogs, they're basically all the same minus maybe a mail merge field in the address or in the, like, the core document. Those can go marketing mail. Significant savings over first class mail. So the post office probably felt that market, who wants to call their product standard? That doesn't seem like a very you know, great marketing name. So marketing mail seems a lot more fitting to what it is. Overall, you're going to see a 4.3% decrease to a 3% increase. Again, the post office eliminated that three-digit sort level because it was the same as the AADC level, so it wasn't important. And the letter weight has increased from 3.3 to 3.5 ounces before a piece pound rate are calculated. So with standard mail or marketing mail, over a certain weight, you have to use a whole different type of calculation for calculating the rates. It's based on a per piece rate and a per pound rate. So they've increased the weight limit before you have to do that extra calculation, um, which means savings overall. Flats also increase that weight break from 3.3 to 4 ounces before you have to do the, the per pound rates. So these rates that we're looking at are the rates up to 3.5 or up to 4 for letters and up to 4 ounces for flats. And you can see what a value this is. You know, for you know, a letters, you're spending 28.8 to 25.1 for up to 3.5 ounces of material. So it's a great rate. Letter rates basically went down 1 to 2%. The flats went up 2 to 3%. And the same on nonprofit. Nonprofit rates went down 3 to 4%. And um, for flats, they increased 2 to 3%. Priority mail. So there's a couple of different way, um, classes of priority mail. There's retail, um, which is what you'd pay at the postal counter or through a postage meter. There's commercial base, which is what you'd get through a PC postage solution. And you used to be able to get this rate if you use USPS click and ship. So if you went to USPS.com and used their priority mail solution, you used to get commercial rates, but now they're, they've converted that to retail. And then commercial plus for those customers who have a contracted agreement and do more than 50,000 packages a year across the facility. So let's say that you have 10 facilities and you're doing a lot of priority mail. Um, you may not have to qualify at one site. It might be across all the sites to hit these thresholds. So here's what priority mail is, is basically anything from 13 ounces to 70 pounds. It's one to three day delivery throughout the U.S and there's nine primary zones based on the distance away from your origin, so where you are and where you're sending from. So it's the most popular USPS package service. So we're seeing a 19% decrease to a 62% increase based on the weight and the zone, and the zone being the distance or how far you're shipping it. So the way to look at this to make this easy for you is there's small to no increases on most zones. So most zones are having very minimal increases, except 15 to 32 pound items going to zones one through four, and one through four are the local zones. You know, think about it like less than halfway across the country. Those are what you're talking about. And those pound rates to those zones are having increases as much as 62%. Um, flat, and you can see in these percentages, you know, here on the one pound, we're seeing three to 6% increases for a retail, 1.9% commercial. But as we get up to 10 pounds, it goes up to 23%. You know, and it's low for the far zones, but very high for the close ones. So it's just depending on the weights of how those things are impacted. Um, 
the flat rate items are seeing the largest overall increase. So you look at your flat rate envelopes, you know, they're in your flat rate boxes, those are going up anywhere between 1% to 8%. On the commercial rates, they're going up anywhere between 3 and 9%. And those are, you know, the regular flat rate envelopes that it's always a fixed price no matter where it's going. If you're running priority mail like we talked about through a postage through uh, click and chip or a postage meter, I we'd recommend considering switching to commercial rates. The overall discount is about a 15% overall reduction between retail and commercial rates. And again, if you're using commercial, um, if you're doing over 50,000 a year, you want to convert to commercial plus because it's about a 3% additional discount. Priority Mail Express is next day, next day guaranteed delivery. It's next day guaranteed to, to most areas, not to all. There are some zip codes where they don't guarantee next day delivery. Same nine primary areas, up to 70 pounds. Overall, you're seeing a 1.7% increase depending on weight and zone. Um, but to simplify this, the retail rates are increased by 3% overall, but it's 5% um, for the flat rate envelopes and the items less than 10 pounds. So most people are sending the flat rate envelopes or items less than 10 pounds when they're shipping express mail. So I would factor a 5% increase here. For commercial rates, they're increasing 1% overall, but 3% for the flat rates and items less than 10 pounds. And plus rates have been basically eliminated. The rates are still there, but there is no discount, as you can see. It's the same rates for commercial plus and commercial base. So now some saving strategies around your packages. So the first is move to commercial if at all possible. So it's a 15% savings for priority. It's 11% savings for express by just converting from a meter imprint or buying stamps at the post office or paying at the post office to generating the entire address label, either importing it into a system or by um, typing the address out. At the same time, you get the full address, return address, tracking barcode, and you get to store all your transactions in one place. It's a much easier way if you're doing lots of packages, and it's a 15% savings. So you get free tracking on USPS.com as well. So you need to process this through a PC postage solutions to get the discount. And there's multiple vendors that do this. So the main vendors are um, Stamps.com, um, Indicia, which is owned by Stamps.com, Ebos has uh, multiple PC postage solutions, um, Neopost has PC postage solutions, and then there are cloud-based offerings that are out there for $20, $30 a month that can do, in some cases, multi-carrier, and they can also do PC postage through those tools. But it's a 15% savings, and all you have to do is type in the address. So the downside, though, is you know a lot of people we find just run priority mail through their postage meter, and they might s stick on a tracking barcode, but it's been addressed someplace else. In order to get this discount, you physically have to type the address into a system, submit that electronically to the post office, which is done through the tools, and generate this type of address label. So it's an extra step, and so you have to make sure it's right for you in order to get the discount. First class package service. So there's two ways to ship small, lightweight parcels. So you could just slap it through your postage meter, go to the retail counter of the post office, um, put stamps on it, and you see this first class mail package service, um, first class mail uh, parcels retail, and you can see it's 267 or 261. 267, excuse me. The other way is you do it just like you would have done that priority mail using a PC postage tool, and you generate the 4x6 label with the address and the barcode and the tracking item, and it's anywhere between 2 and 62% less. That first class commercial parcel um, is going up from 0.4% to 17.8% um, based on what it was last year. Now, the significance of using this type of service and where it really pays off is as items get heavier. Like, look at items 7, 8 ounces, um, 13 ounces, where the pricing is, you know, give or take over 10% less. The biggest thing, though, is if you're using a postage meter or stamps going to the retail counter, the first class parcel rates only go up to 13 ounces. So it means if you're doing heavier packages than 13 ounces, you would have to go to priority mail rates, which you can see are $6.65 to $10.50 um, if it's over 13 ounces. First class package service goes up to 16 ounces. So you can see the savings on those heavier weight items are really significant. And it makes it a competitive service to using either priority mail or one of the private carriers. 
some additional rate change items, international rates for letters are basically staying the same. There could be different rates inside international for packages that are changing, but at least for the basic letters that are the most common, those are staying pretty, pretty much the same. Library mail is going up about 1% for the single piece, which is the most common that we see. If you're using any sort of library mail with pre-sort rates or basic uh, or you know barcodes, those rates are increasing anywhere between 2% to 6%. Media mail is a similar story. You know, the single piece rates most people use are going up about 1%, and then the, the pre sort rates are going up, you know, 2 to 6%. Special services, certificate of mailing is going up 5 cents. Um, if you do registered, that's staying the same. Um, the most common special service that we see is certified mail, and the certified mail is up 5 cents. The return receipt is going up another 5 cents. If you do electronic return receipt, that's going up 10 cents. Um, first class parcel service is still free tracking, marketing parcels going up two, two cents for tracking, and priority mail is still free for tracking. Signature confirmation though we are seeing a 10 cent increase on the electronic version. One savings tactic, like we said, the certified with return receipt is sort of the most common special service that we see out there because people need that proof that the person got it. So most common way to do it is to do fill up the green card and you get the green card back and you put the green card in the file. If you can switch from that to an electronic version, it saves you $1.30 and in some cases it can be much simpler. So you slap on one of the tracking barcodes, that could be done either by a label or it could be you know, generated onto the document itself with special envelopes like you see. And then those can be submitted, up, you know, uploaded electronically as a batch or one by one. And then you, when you need to track them, you can go and see every single certified piece that you've ever sent, um, and you can track them one by one or as a batch, and you could basically print out the return receipt as a, a sheet of paper on USPS letterhead. But it saves $1.30 a piece, so it could be a good saving strategy. So some savings tips around, <clears throat> excuse me, some savings tips around packages is compare the rates between packages and UPS and FedEx. Um, UPS and FedEx are the primary carriers we have in this country. You know, there are certainly others that are out there. Um, these are the most common that we see. So the benefits to the Postal Service is they don't charge extra fees for things like fuel surcharges, residential delivery, delivery area surcharges, Saturday delivery, address correction fees. For If you have lightweight items going to residents, things less than five pounds, with all those fees that we mentioned, it can end up being less expensive for some of those. They also have a first class parcel service that we just went up through that's 260 to 430 per item, which is very difficult for the private carriers to get down to those levels, and they give free boxes. UPS and FedEx, on the other hand, you know, if you're a large volume shipper, have negotiated rates that can be much less based on you know, how big a customer you are. They give guaranteed delivery. The post office only gives guaranteed delivery on express. Um, UPS and FedEx give guaranteed delivery on their ground shipments as well with you know one to five day guaranteed delivery. And most of those deliveries can be are delivered in one to three days throughout the country. They give you dedicated account managers and typically have the best rates on items going over five pounds or lightweight items going to businesses. So all this obviously assumes you have a corporate agreement. So what we recommend in order to reduce costs in these areas is look for systems that have multi-carrier options. And that can be done either manually where you can compare rates from the postal service and then you can go and check out your, your carrier rate, your private carrier rates. There are now cloud-based multi-carrier systems out there that cost 20 to, 20 to $60 a month that can rate shop between these carriers. And then there's PC server-based systems that are you know, much more elaborate that you know, can go on installed in, inside your network and do a lot more rating, routing, and rules um, that can help save money. But it's gotten more and more important to do this type of rate shopping than it ever has in the past. So how do you budget for this increase? So here's a simple tool you can create. You look at what your spend was last year. You estimate the percentage of the mail that was letters and flats versus packages and expedited. And what we recommend is just to be safe, cover yourself with 1% um, 1 increase on your letters and flats, 5% increase on your packages, and that should be a safe way to budget for this. So in this example, $100,000 of spend, you know, 80,000 of that was from letters, uh, 20000 was from packages. At these increases, it adds an extra $1,000 to your budget. Luckily, from an increase perspective, this is one of the smaller rate increases that we've had, 
and inside this there are plenty of ways to reduce costs. Um, if you're seeing a higher mix of letters and flats versus packages, you can change those mixes and that will adjust you know, what the increase in your budget is. So what you need to do. If you have a mail machine, you want to make sure that you download the new rates before January 22nd when the rates take effect. So you physically have to go to your meter and you have to make sure that you do either you know, a postage ad or check for rate updates. Each meter is a little bit different. If you're not sure how to do that, there are links that we've given to the main vendors in the mailing space where they have websites that guide you through those instructions. If you need more information on any of these classes of mail, you can go to the USPS Postal Explorer website and there's a link here that we'll provide. And if you want, um, so we're going to send out a copy of this presentation to everyone, but we also have a cheat sheet that you can download, a comparison chart that goes over all of these rates. So if you want to keep this near your mailing system or give it to people inside your organization so they can understand this change, um, we'll provide you that sheet that you can use. So a rate summary. So all that we talked about, I'm going to boil down to one slide. First class single piece mail is going up 1.1% decrease to a 9% increase. Your first class single piece metered mail letters are going to have a three cent savings over retail, um, but the price is going from 46.5 down to 46 cents. The commercial mail, so anything with barcodes using a pre-sort house or you're automating internally, is going to see a 0.8 cent percent decrease to a 2% increase. And the base price, remember, goes from 2 ounces to 3.5 ounces at that same base rate. Marketing mail seeing a 4.3% decrease to a 3% increase. The maximum weight for the letters and flats goes up um, to 3.5 ounces and 4 ounces, based on if it's letters or flats. Priority mail um, is going to see a 19% decrease to a 62% increase. We recommend budgeting 5% to cover the different weights and zones. Priority Mail Express, 1% to 7% increase, budget 5% to cover the different weights and zones, and then first class mail package services, 0.4% um, to 17.8% increases. So now a summary of all those savings ideas that we talked about. So first off, use a postage meter or PC postage to save, make sure that you're saving that $0.03 cents per letter. You know, there's no reason you want to spend $0.49 cents on letters when you can spend $0.46. Cents. If you can, if your volume is high enough, convert your letters and flats to automation classes. It's six, up to 62% less. And remember, up to 3.5 ounces of mail goes for the price of one ounce. If you can, fold your flats. If you have lightweight flats, you know, fold those in half into 6 by 9 envelopes or into number 10 envelopes, and the savings are significant. Um, the automation classes give you faster delivery and automated address validation where they check each address. On your priority mail, convert from the retail rates to the commercial rates. It's 15% savings over priority mail and 11% savings for express. Um, if you have first class mail parcels, convert them from retail to commercial. It's a 2 to 62% savings. If you're doing a lot of um, certified with return receipt, consider switching to the electronic form at $1.30 savings. And then compare pricing across carriers for the best rates for each package. So. We're going to have a future webinar um, in March that's going to be about a connectivity for meters. So basically what's going on is most meters throughout the country are connected via analog phone lines. The phone companies are planning on stopping offering analog phone lines in the near future. So the meter companies are basically not offering the analog lines on future meter products. So what it means is if you have to do a service bar replacement or if you um, are renewing a contract, that meter that comes in may force you to, either, to put it onto the network. So there's a lot of issues about this, especially if you're larger organizations. How do you get all these meters onto your network? What are the options, the challenges getting these done? How do you work with IT? Um, what resources can you go to for help? And how do you streamline the process? So we're going to cover those things based on our experience dealing with this with large organizations. So just a little bit about what we do. We're the only mail audit and recovery company in the US, at least the only one we found. And we manage the mailing spends for large organizations or for companies that have, you know, 20 plus postage meters or mailing systems throughout their organization. We have anywhere between 20 and our largest clients have over 2,000. We're managing a portfolio of 61,000 pieces of mailing equipment and we feel like we're the leading experts in the world in this topic. Our average client savings is 60%, so the transactions we do are 60% less than they were before we were involved. 
and we don't require that anyone switches vendors because we don't have any vendor affiliation. Our average client savings is seven, about $700,000 and included with that is we've recovered about almost $5 million in lost posted vendor overcharges and fees that we're able to get money back for the clients. Everyone on our team worked in the mailing industry and we have I think now 243 years of combined experience in this space. And what clients really seem to like is we provide the only web-based tools that provide visibility to this end category. And then we help you manage this process throughout. So how we work if you need help in this area is for any client where we we're willing to do a, a no cost analysis so we can show you what your spends are today and quantify what the savings objective, what the savings could be um, through our program. And it's no cost and it's no obligation. The only thing we need is a simple one page document that lets the vendors know that we're working on your behalf. And then you provide copies of invoices or an accounts payable export or if you have a list from your vendor of your equipment. And then we run our audits for you and analyze your spends, your errors, your lost postage and conduct this analysis. And, only, and then we present our findings to you and then from that point you're able to determine if we make sense as a potential partner and if you decide to move forward we'll go submit the credits and refunds, help you negotiate new pricing work in, in a catalog for your sites. We work with your locations to help them renew, right size, terminate equipment, and then we manage this category for you. And the typical model is it's a percentage of any savings we document, although some clients are on management agreements, but if typically if we don't save any money, we're free. And then we manage it on our web dashboard so you have visibility to everything that's going on inside your portfolio. So I want to open it up to questions. Hopefully you felt that this type of webinar providing you the details of this rate change was helpful. And like I said, we'll send the details, uh, we'll send out the presentation as well as the recording of it and the cut sheets to everyone who attended the call. So I want to thank everyone for being on there and I want to open it up to any questions.